All right, today's little project is changing the pickup switch on a Fender Telecaster. It's fairly straightforward. It's electrically easy, but uh, if yours is old like mine is, it could have been hacked on a few times in the past. This one has been. So we're taking this uh, three-way switch and installing it here. So off to the emergency room we go. And let's see what's going on here. So the first thing to do is <clears throat> take off the plate, and uh, which is just two screws. They go into the wood on the body. And take a look at what you got. We're not going to talk about ohms or microfarads or anything today. We're just going to talk about this switch right over here. You can see the little eight terminal switch. And it is eight terminals, but <clears throat> we actually only have six that we're concerned with and almost really only three because four of them are tied together with one wire and then the other two wires go to each one of the pickups and the bridge and the neck so that's pretty straightforward on the switch itself you can see there's two wires that get hooked up to these other two wires and they go across the wafer there so on this little diagram you can see the two wires hook up and they go across the wafer so we fire up our <clears throat> little hot finger and uh, get ready to lay some solder on here. So in order to start, first we got to remove the old one, which if you got a little hot finger like that, it's just a cheap, I think I got that 50 bucks on Amazon. It works pretty good. Just heat them up, touch them a little bit, and they pop right off. They're small wires, the connections are small, so it doesn't take a whole lot of heat to make that happen. And now I just kind of identify this white wire, at least on my guitar it's white, uh, goes to the neck and this one goes to the bridge. And this other one is our power wire, which essentially comes from uh, the pickup. I'm sorry, the pickup. Comes from the jack on your that goes to your amp. So... <clears throat> I wanted a little bit of wire from there to make a jumper, so I got my little wire strippers out. It's, I believe, 22 gauge wire it was on this one anyway. And I think that's a stock pickup. So I just decided to take a little piece off of here and tin it with a little bit of solder so that when I snip it off there, it's not eight different little pieces of wire, but just one piece of wire. So just make sure that the whole thing's got a little bit of solder on it. It doesn't take much. You're not trying to glob it on there or anything. Just make it shiny. And then go ahead and snip that piece off after you measure it. Here I'm measuring it against there. I hold with my thumbnail. Take a look at it. Snip it right there. And then hold it up against the terminals on the switch. And look at that. It actually will fit. So, did something right there. Uh, so the next step is to put some solder on the terminals. It's called tinning. This isn't a soldering instruction. I'm assuming most people know a little bit about soldering. But basically, I just put a little bit of solder on there to help attach the wire to the terminal. So with that bit done, I'll grab my little jumper here. And I do suggest that when you do some work like this, lay off the coffee. <laughs> lay off the Red Bull. Uh, it makes it a little bit easier. I'm not as steady as I used to be, but there it is. It's stuck on there. The other one's up in the air because it's a nice solid piece of wire now, so I just push down with my little screwdriver, which isn't too much of a heat sink, so it doesn't really cause any difficulty in the soldering the other side. <clears throat> just touch that and make sure that you're happy with that connection. And after you're done with that, I always like to put a little bit of extra solder because I'm going to hook another wire up to one of these terminals anyway. And it just looks pretty, so I'm just making it look pretty here. After that, we need to jump a wire from there over to the power wire. That wire there goes to go over to there. These two middle ones are not used. Those are the ones in the diagram that aren't used. So we're going to go from there to the jumper. 
Okay, that's pretty straightforward. And if you remember, <clears throat> that's the wire that crosses over the wafer. So you're just going to take a little piece of extra wire that I found on a on a trailer plug-in that I had in the garage and soldered it in place. It goes across the wafer right there, like you can see. Pretty straightforward. Now that's the bridge connection, and the other is the neck connection for the pickups. Pretty straightforward. Now just pop the other switch out and get ready to put the new one in. Two screws, they're machine screws. Pop the little hat switch cover off of there, and there's the old switch. Bye bye. Then bring in the new one, introduce it to the guitar. Hello, guitar, I'm a switch. Hello, switch, I'm a guitar. And just put it in position, check that the holes match. Yep, the holes match pretty good. Looks like it should go in directly. So uh, the new switch came with some screws that fit the switch. And so I just grab those. Uh, I check with the screwdriver to see if they're magnetic. They're not. I don't think it makes any difference really on the guitar, but uh, it's good to know these things. So number one, Phillips. Uh, for those who know the difference between a one and a two and a three, it's, the, it's a small Phillips is all. But these screws were too big for the holes in the plate that attach to the guitar. That is a stock plate. It's the original plate. And they just did not fit. They were too big. Just by a little bit. But you can see there I'm pushing on it and it would not go through. So find a drill bit. This was about uh, 730 seconds I believe. Just barely as big as the screw. You don't want to do a lot of damage to this thing so just grab the drill and sort of wallow it around a little bit carefully don't hit the guitar with your drill bit don't hit your fingers with the drill bit and it's uh, pretty easy it's not scary or anything just kind of evenly go around uh, at a not a low not a high speed you can just kind of low speed kind of go around and around like this and make that hole a little bit bigger so that the screws will actually fit. And my puppy got curious, she had to see what I was doing. <laughs> so, once I got her satisfied, I looked at the switch, here we go, okay, that's for the neck position, and the neck position is the back one. So if the switch is pointing forward towards the neck pickup, then the wire goes on the back of the switch. And it's kind of logical uh, if you've followed along with the schematics. Uh, so we'll go ahead and tighten down the screws. Pretty straightforward here. Just uh, make sure that uh, you snug them down even and, and snug. And we'll pull this uh, power wire out and connect it to the wires that go across to the four terminals. This is the wire that powers it sends a signal to the bridges, uh, sorry, to the pickups. There we go. And now it's time to connect the pickup wires. So if the switch is pushed back, then that's going to be your bridge pickup, which is my yellow wire in this case. And that's going to go on the front terminal. And if it goes the other way, then it's obviously the neck pickup. There's only really two terminals here that we need to worry about anymore. This one was a little bit long, so I snipped the end of it off just so it'd be easier to hook up. You don't need a whole lot of wire sticking out. So basically, it's just a real simple matter of touching a wire on there, heating up the solder, ba -doom, ba -doom, and you're done. Let it cool. You see the solder get kind of hazy instead of shiny. You know that it's cool enough that you can let go of the wire and everything will stay where it's supposed to be. I snipped a little extra wire off of the end of this other one. You can see they just require a little short piece of wire sticking out from the insulation. And then you just touch that to the solder. And again, cut down on the red bull before you do this. 
but there you go it's all connected up everything looks happy the switch actually goes in the back I want to make sure it didn't hit the volume knob and uh, there's the wires going to the the yellow going to the bridge and the little white one going to the neck so put it down in there but uh, before you do that just look and check the connections make sure you didn't knock anything loose while you were doing this everything looked good here so in she goes make sure that the wires are in not pinched or anything when you put it together put the screws back in and we should be good to go there's a little hat switch cover that goes back on the switch and here's where I ran into my second problem with this Oak Grigsby switch the little hat switch part did not fit the stem on the switch which was a bummer so fortunately I have cutting and filing tools and I made it fit so there you have it let's hear it oh here we go 